Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir and welcome to another one of these different kind of videos you might recognize from the backdrop. This isn't what typically I do, but it's just one of those kind of videos that I just kind of want to do for fun. So I was like, hey, why not? So if you caught the video that I did last week, I promised that this week there was going to be a video on modding an NES for HD output and then a comparison between what all the different styles look like, like modded NES, original, yada, yada, yada. Well, I've had some scheduling conflicts with my modder, despite the fact that he was supposed to do it the day that that video went up, it hasn't happened yet. So that video should be next week, depending on his availability. If not, it'll be soon, don't worry. I don't know if anybody's actually worried, but just, if you saw that video and you're wondering where it is, it'll, it'll be there. It's just, it's a process. So for this episode, I actually had an idea. I was gonna wait for a while to do this, but because like I just had this video opening and I didn't feel like doing a best of, I was just like, why don't I, I do it now? And it's just, as you know, I, I have a pretty decent collection of NES games. I don't have a ton, but I have a nice amount. And one of the first things that I always do whenever I get in an NES game is I open it up, I have a look at the board, I clean it if need be, and then I try it out. That's what I literally, I always do. I never just put a dirty game right into my NES because that's gonna dirty up the pins and cause damage to the machine, which is a tip if you don't know that, always clean your game at least slightly before you put it into your system. So obviously doing this, I've seen a lot of the different boards and I've seen a lot of really weird boards. I just thought it would be kind of interesting to show the difference between what an official NES games board looks like than like the unlicensed and just the random other ones that maybe, maybe they are official NES, maybe they aren't. And I also wanted to compare it to like a Super Nintendo board and an N64 board. I just thought it would be kind of like a fun, simple little video just showing all these different things and being like, wow, that's fucking weird. So yeah, guys, enough uh, talking here. Let's just get right to it. All right, guys, so here's a pretty typical licensed NES game. This one's by Konami, Blades of Steel. I'm sure you've heard of it. This is actually part of my pile of games that I keep to the side here that do not work that eventually I need to fix. And I thought about doing a video on fixing games today like I used to do, but I really want to wait till my top loader is good before I do that because it's just so much easier to do that kind of stuff with a top loader. So this is, it's a very typical licensed NES game. Three screws, you need the special game bit screwdriver. So let's just, let's open this right up. Okay, so. Ta -da! So this is a pretty standard looking NES game. Now I can already see where on the pins. This kind of makes me want to uh, do a can I fix it video. But no, I, I gotta wait. It's a very standard NES game. It's got the pins. These ones are actually separated in the, in the middle here. Some of them you'll notice it's a solid line. Some of them have a little separation there. You turn it upside down so you can actually read all the writing. NES VS. It says here, NES UN ROM. I'll bring it up close to the camera. All right, so there you go. So you can see it's a pretty typical NES game. It has the word NES, it has the date, copyright, NES UN ROM-09. It's pretty standard. And it just occurred to me, I haven't really done a whole lot of research into this game because I haven't done a Can I Fix It, but I really hope that this one is a legit and not a repro and that I didn't just tell you that a repro is a very standard NES game. If so, I mean, my bad, y'all. Okay, and so speaking of standard NES games, here's Bubble Bobble. This is another game. I'm actually doing a playthrough right now of it on my channel. So let's play, check that out if that's the kind of thing you're into. But speaking of just standard NES games, let's open this one up and see how it looks in comparison. So opening this bad boy up, as you can see, does that, does that remind you of anything? So as you should be able to tell, it looks almost identical. It's incredibly similar. So this time it says NES SFR ROM, but it has similar chips. It's got, it's got the region lock chips, the game, everything there. It's a very similar design. Standard NES game look, right? Now how about Gradius? This is my copy of Gradius. This is my favorite game on the NES currently. Let's have a look at what this one looks like. This one is a five screw, although the others were all three screws and Oh yeah, this is one of the few that does not use the game bit screwdriver. Okay, we're opening it up here and would you look at that? It looks incredibly similar. 
This is probably one of the thicker chips, and as you can see, it's the solid line of pins, but doesn't that look incredibly similar to what I was just showing you? I don't need to do a close-up on this one. It's an NES CN ROM 256. Got the chips there, the CIC, it's got everything. So PRG ROM, I thought I was reading that as RPG ROM. I'm like, what? But yeah, so it's it's pretty much, this is what to expect from a standard NES game. So I'm gonna leave this one opened up and just put it to the side for now. So next up, why don't we look at another standard NES game? I mean, how about the original Mario Duck Hunt Combo Kart? This here is 3D World Runner. I'm actually, I don't remember opening this one up. I'm curious if it's gonna be the same before I do the Mario. And would you look at that, 3D World Runner. It's pretty much the exact same. This one's actually a really shiny, nice looking chip. This is in really good condition. So yeah, let's open up the Mario one next. So this one, you might notice it's in really terrible shape. Um, I actually have a copy of this without track meat. Like this has Mario, Duck Hunt, and track meat. I have a copy of this. I have two copies of this in perfect shape without that third game. But this is the one that doesn't work. So it's why it was already by my workstation. And this is Phil's copy, by the way. And just, ugh. This is fucking nasty, man. So you might immediately notice, with me having opened it, that it looks a little different. You flip it over and it's a glob top. That's these little things of, I think, tar instead of chips. Now, there's very few Nintendo games that are glob tops. This is one of them. And I actually, you can barely even see that it has a Nintendo logo. It's just on the back. Uh, yeah, you know what? Why don't I do a zoom up on this one? So this is what we NES collectors call a glob top. There's not a lot of these, but they're basically the original games that Nintendo released, more or less. So one of the main reasons that they did glob tops like this, to the best of my knowledge, was actually just because they were easier to produce. Nintendo had a very tight schedule and they were rushing to make it for like a Christmas release of the NES. So they kind of cut whatever corners they could. This style being one of them. If you see any other games that are glob tops, they're probably repros, unless they're very early NES games, like Mario or like Gyromite. They had a few other corners that they cut to, to make the release date there. Specifically, these games and a few others are special in that way, but um, that's gonna have to be another video just because it's kind of a bigger subject than just looking at weird cards, so. But again, this is a licensed original Nintendo game. It's not a fake. And as you might have noticed, very different. So the only other licensed Nintendo game that I wanna have a look at here is actually the original Legend of Zelda Gold Cart. This is actually my father's copy that he's lent to me and I've never opened this up, so I actually don't know what's gonna be inside. So let's, let's, let's have a look. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so this, I'm sure there's gonna be a battery save on the other end, but this is actually, yeah. So this is on, this is a little unique, but it's still a licensed Nintendo game. So this one has a lot more chips, as you might notice. It has a battery for battery saves right there. But generally, it looks fairly similar to what you've been seeing so far. It has the very clear green chip. It has the solid line of pins. It's a unique game, but it's fairly standard within those parameters. And that's something funny that I'll mention. Um, I know my father told me that he was told that the battery save in this game was only supposed to last something like 10 years. And he's had this game almost since the release and still has a save file. He still played it fairly regularly and no issues. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so now into those weird ass games I promised you. First up, this is another one of those games that does not work. It's an unlicensed game by Tengen. Now, you might have heard of Tengen. They are probably the kings of unlicensed games. So let's open it up and have a look. And just so you know, I have opened this one up before. And one of the annoying things about Tengen games, by the way, is that there's a hidden third screw underneath the sticker. And if you have to open up, which this one I would have had to anyways, just to be able to clean it properly to get it to work, 
you have to break the sticker to get to that third screw. It's kind of a dick move, but in the same way, it also does let you know if anybody else has opened up and worked on the game. All right, already you should be seeing this looks a little different, but not crazy different. But when I flip it over, so the first thing you should notice is this does not have that nice, clear green color that all the official Nintendo games had. This one's really faded, kind of off, and that's something I've noticed pretty much with all the unlicensed games. Other than that, the setup looks pretty similar with the chips like that, although it's got a big chip at the top, which the Nintendo ones don't. Other than that though, it's similar, it's just... The moment you open up and you see that color, it's a little strange. And this has been consistent for me across the board with all my Tengen games. I have three and they all are kind of discolored looking like this, so I guess that's just kind of their style. So next up on the roster, another unlicensed game. This one's again a little different, it uses a star screwdriver and it's King of Kings, the early years, because you know, you gotta have Jesus in your life. I'm just kidding, this is just, this was just, I saw an unlicensed NES game, and I was like, fuck yeah, I gotta get that. It's by Wisdom Tree, and they give you instructions on how to boot it up in case it doesn't work. These weird unlicensed ones, a lot of them have instructions like that, or weird things on the end, just so that you, you'll know how to play them, which is pretty weird. <laughs> like, I think the worst I ever saw was um, Little Red Hood which is an un unlicensed NES game, which you literally, unless you're using a top loader, which has no region lock chip, you literally have to take another game and put the game onto it to be able to play. And it's got this weird thing so that it will still fit in an NES front loader. And it's like, it hangs out the front. It's just the weirdest fucking way of doing a game. I guess it's the only way these people could figure out how to make their game work on the NES hardware. I'm like Tengen who pretty much solved it. The only uh, positive thing I can say about this is that using a star screwdriver actually makes it kind of easy to get the screws out and this one has another fucking middle screw. Totally forgot that. Oh yeah, and I remember when I had to open this one up, it doesn't fucking screw out all the way. But there you go. Immediately you should be seeing a weird difference again. So this is another weird one. It's got a very strange green color. It's also got all these things up here, which no other NES game really seems to have, and a bunch of little capacitors, and it's just, I guess this is what they had to do to make the game work. Okay, so next up, the first games that I ever actually opened up, and what got me started doing this, would be these huge multi-carts. They're bootleg, kind of illegal cartridges that have just a shit ton of other games on them. This one says 150. It actually has somewhere around half that because a lot of them are just kind of hacks or duplicates. But these, this and the other one that I have over there were the first cartridges that I ever opened up, I ever looked up how to fix and got to work. They're, they're fills and I know he kept them from when he was a kid so I did my best to get them working again. And it was basically what started me on this path of NES collecting and actually having like an appreciation for all this stuff. So these are both a little different, the two multi-carts. So I'll, I'll show you uh, what this one looks like. Oh yeah, this is the giant fucking one. Okay, so does that look like anything you've ever seen before? This would be a rare example of where the cartridge actually takes up the entire fucking plastic cover. It's very close to taking up the full thing. That's rare, there's not a lot of them. Usually, as you saw, they're just these little chunks down at the bottom. This is because it has 150 games on it and it also has to have all the software to make those happen. And you notice on the board it also has fucking open spaces where I guess they could have put more or more chips? I don't know. I wish I could say I know exactly how this one works, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't. So something else that's weird about this is when you open it up and you take off the back, the chips are actually facing you as opposed to facing the front side of the game. That's really weird, like this is Gradius. This is the front, you take it out, the chips are on that side. This is pretty much how every game, even the unlicensed ones, that's how they all look. This is pretty much the only one I've ever seen that's not like that. Maybe there are, maybe this is something people did, but this it just looks fucking weird to me. This one, you can actually hear inside the fucking rattle. So this is just a weird one. It's got the huge chip layered up. It's just weird, this guy. Now the other one of Phil's multi-carts, which is one of the first ones that I ever opened up, would be this. 
The 63 in one, which was the harder one to get working and still occasionally causes problems. I might have to do a full fix using like all the tools and stuff at some point, but we'll see. Maybe it'll work better on my top loader. It is a fucking bootleg, so it could be just issues with the region lock. We'll see, but I'll open this one up and you'll see something kind of unique here. So much like the other one, this is another multi-cart that uses almost the entire fucking thing. And actually, that's true. On this one too, the chips are facing you instead of facing the front. I don't remember that. That's fucking weird. So this one, you might notice, is actually two different things. If you're wondering what, what's on with that, this here, you don't know what that is. That is actually a Famicom to NES adapter. It makes Famicom game playable on an NES. It changes the pins to the correct, correct size, all that. And actually looking at the pins, I can kind of see why, um, why it wasn't really working that well and why I might still need to fix it. The dickish thing that these people did is they super glued their game into the adapter, so you can't use the adapter for anything else. Now I was talking about Gyromite earlier, that's one of the game that kind of relates to how this one is done. But basically this is just, all these games are coded in as like Famicom games. This is like a Famicom multi-card that you just put an adapter on and now it's for NES. And I guess maybe that kind of helps them get past all the shit, I don't, I don't really know. So those were all games that were produced way back in the day when Nintendo was producing games. So let's get into a few newer ones. For example, this is Battle Kid. That's a red chip, that's really, that's cool, that's really weird. I have never seen an NES game that's red. It's by Retro USB and they actually printed like a little, I think that's like a seal. Maybe that's the uh, Retro USB seal of quality. <laughs> Puns. But yeah, so this is like a modern day NES game. This is what it looks like, it's pretty cool. As you might notice, it looks absolutely nothing like an original and the pins on this thing are shiny as fuck. This is actually really cool, I'm glad I opened this one up. So that one there was Battle Kid, again. Very frustrating game, but it's one I'm glad to have in my collection. So the only other recent game that I have, and this is more or less a bootleg, would be this here, Final Fantasy VII for the NES. I gotta say, the, the artwork on it could kinda use some work. And it has an unofficial Nintendo seal quality. <laughs> And I don't know how much Squaresoft would like you using their logo there. So this is one that I bought off eBay just because I saw this, I thought it was really cool. It's basically like a ROM hack more or less. And I don't have at this time like an EverDrive, so I don't really have a way of playing them. This thing was like 20 bucks and I just really wanted to try it out. I thought it'd be cool. So I bought this knowing that this is not like an official game. Oh wow. Did he glue this? I didn't even have a look at this afterwards. I, like I never, this was from before I used to open these things up. Okay, so this has another one of those adapters in it. NES, Famicom to NES. This is NES cart label side, Famicom cart label side. I don't know, so I guess this is programmed on a Famicom chip. Maybe that's easier. I, I have no idea about like this whole repro stuff. Maybe I should uh, look on John Riggs' channel, maybe he'll know. I don't know why there's that there. So it's got two globs, it's got two chips, one's by Sony, it's got the adapter, and it's got a battery save with another chip on the back, and written in marker FF7. So this is another weird one. It's also kind of a weird adapter. I don't know, guys. You can tell that this was, um, that this is not a professional game. But I'm still, I'm glad to have this one. Oh, the chip is Chinese, too. It's got, um... I don't know if you can see that, but it's got some Chinese writing on it too, so it's made with Chinese parts. I also like the fact that it says like, F FC cart label side, NES cart label side. It's obviously for them when they make these games, for like the people who did it, because even in this, in their shell, it only fits in one way. You can't get it to fit the other way. So this is obviously NES cart label side. So that's for the people who made this thing, which is kinda, kinda funny. But I guess leaving that on, it's obvious that they're not trying to trick people into thinking that this was an actual NES game. Like, it's very clear that it's a repro, which at least... Because that's it, like, 
I know everybody agrees with this, but I have no problems with repros or bootleg games. The only problem I have is when people try and pass them off as the real thing. Because then they can charge more and it's just, it's, it's sneaky and shady and for people who don't, who aren't in the know, they might fall for it, so. But honestly, something like this I have no problem with. So the last thing that I promised I would do is show the comparison and difference between an official NES cart, SNES, and N64, and it's gonna be the first time I've had to open an N64 cart, so that'll be kinda of interesting for me at least. So this is SNES, uses the same screwdriver that you're gonna be using on official NES games, uh, and it's actually just two screws here at the bottom. I have opened this one up before just to have a look. So it's just two screws there at the bottom, then it just kind of pops open, and there you have it, the SNES game, much more complex than NES, much more tiny. It's also, the chip is a lot less labeled than an NES chip. Like there's a lot less writing and stuff on it. I don't really feel like I need to do a close up, but it's just like, this is, this is just what a standard SNES game looks like. And again, this is one of those things where you have all this room in the cart and the majority of them just take up this little, little tiny bit there. And so finally, N64. So I grabbed this game here. It's um, Bassmasters 2000. It's a game I got. It's the label's not great on it, and it's a game where if, like I can't figure out where everything goes afterwards. I don't really care because it's a fishing game, and they don't really appeal to me, especially on N64, where there were at least two or three fishing games. I know my father used to like them for some reason, but so there's two screws, and I think there's some kind of plate I have to remove in the front, right? I think I actually have to take off my custom N64 end label too before I mess around with it. So, oh, so actually after you take the screws out, you just gotta know how to open it and it opens really easily and nicely actually. Okay, and yeah, this is what I was talking about. It's got this metal plate, which you gotta take off with a star screwdriver. And then I removed all the screws, so this should theoretically come out or is there a screw that I'm not seeing somewhere? No, it came right out. It just, you had to apply a little bit of force. And then it's got another shield behind it, but there is our game, which also has a plastic thing to, I guess, set to set it when you put it in. That's pretty cool. This again, it looks, it's tiny, like the Super, I can take that off for now. This is tiny, it's like a Super Nintendo game. Smaller than the standard NES one, and yet it's 3D. That's one thing I'll say on this game too, is that it's actually, I don't know how well that picks up, but it's actually a little bit discolored, the green of the chip. So it reminds me a little bit more of like an unlicensed NES game. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this insight into how some of the weirder NES carts look and also how they compare to like SNES and N64. That's all this video was, was really just me going like, hey, some of these look kind of fucking weird, don't you agree? And for me personally, as like a gamer, a collector, and somebody who fixes up these things, it's really interesting to have a look at like the different styles and see what like other companies were trying to do to be able to do the same thing that Nintendo was doing. So I just thought it'd be interesting, you know, kind of a good idea for a short little video. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something. If you have a similar experience or you have a cartridge that you've opened up and it looks just like crazy sauce, let me know in the comments down below and maybe like I know something about it or somebody else will know something about it. It's just really interesting to actually, because when you're a kid you just have like this plastic cartridge and that's the game. When you actually open it up and start looking at, you know, kind of like how it all works and everything, it gets a little weird. So I just thought it would be, just thought it'd be a fun idea for a video. But yeah guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, my name is Rob Noir and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, my name is Rob Noir and today I'm doing yet another new kind of video here. Today I'm dipping my toe into the conversation going online that's all about Rob Noir, this is Phil the Dreamer and welcome back to Bubble Bobble, what might be the last episode. Yeah, we've been doing uh, not too bad so far. I don't know about the kill count, but I 